new ways using animal training, whether it's management, training, species, new applications. And then staff development. Um, we have innovation in teaching, ways that people can learn, opportunities, and the way we think about training is changing. So we're going to go over these a little bit here. All right, so the new frontiers. Um, I am really excited about remote feeders uh, for training. So they can help you capture behaviors. That's an easy one, right? So if an animal's at a distance and he did something you like, you push a button and he gets his goodie, right? So, um, but what they're really cool for, in my opinion, is helping with fear responses. If you have an animal that's so scared that you can't um, get close to it, to offer it something, usually we are using food as a reinforcer, or not even a reinforcer, just classical conditioning, with, um, well, he could be reinforcing calm behavior, um, with animals that are afraid of us. We're just trying to pair something good with our presence. And typically they don't want to you know, be scratched by us, they're not going to play with toys or anything because they're not calm. So using food tends to be a good way to start that relationship. But if you can't get close enough to even offer food to that animal, a remote feeder gives you that opportunity. Same with an animal showing aggressive behavior. Um, the other thing that I think is really cool about these remote feeders is they help us place feeders at places where we may not have access because of bad exhibit design. So uh, if you've got a shift door that you can't get a target over there, you can't get food over there to reinforce the animal for making approximations towards going through that shift door, a remote feeder could potentially help you there. And um, there's also new ways of using them for enrichment. And some of them have so much technology involved that they are collecting data. And I'm just going to probably go to um, video clips. Um, and they also have Bluetooth technology now, too. So you can operate them from your phones, whether you're um, there or at home. Um, but Jerry has uh, this contact in Ireland called Feed Pods. And I grabbed some of their um, flyers from upstairs. So they're on the table here if you want more information on theirs. Um, obviously, designed for much bigger animals, but it also um, dispenses on timers and I think has Bluetooth as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so Jerry can tell you a lot more about them too, but there's their website. Um, the, the one that I'm showing is a little pricey, um, and they're they're going to start shipping to Europe in 2016, but if I'm over here, I'll stuff one in my bag for you. <laughs> they're pretty cool. So I really love what they're doing at Dublin Zoo with their elephant herd management practices and training with, with real, a really conscientious of the herd dynamics. And notice how the female just came over to check on her baby there and that they asked the, elephant, the baby elephant to back up. Um, being very conscientious that that relationship is really important during the training process. It increases mom's confidence, increases the baby's confidence, reduces stress for everybody if they're empowered to be together. But at the same time, the animal can choose to come in and participate in a training session if he wants to and have very good consequences. And so I think that's even what Jerry's saying right now. His mom was doing a, a behavior where she was laying down, and so the calf wanted to go see what was going on, and the calf completely has the opportunity to do that. He's not separated from mom. But if he comes back, good stuff happens. And all in the, in the name of keeping stress levels low, to avoid uh, triggering any potential um, risk of disease. And of course, they're being trained to participate in medical procedures, especially um, preventative care and checking on health care in, in case of any disease outbreak.